Good evening, Lon Sugar. Uh, Julian Preston Powers from Thermohelm Crash Helmets. We've developed at the Sussex University. At last, somebody who's got a hard product. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There, you go. there you go. Something you buy, you manufacture and sell. That's at right. Last. Finally. No disrespect to all these consultants and uh, service, <laughs> service providers and internet providers. You actually got something, right? That's right. Oh, I'm delighted. Uh, essentially, a new motorcycle helmet that has okay. a two part chemical I don't pack. Care. It's a hard product. <laughs> right, right, right. Right, I right. right. I agree. Um, Two-part chemical pack goes cold on impact, stops you dying from brain swelling. Okay. It's a, it's a proven life-saving technology. Um, we're at the point now that we need to move forward to the next stage, and we need to start getting into production and so forth. And I, I just wanted to ask you, when you were developing Amstrad and so forth, and you had your patents and so forth, did you find yourself in a situation where you had to give up share equity to raise funds? Um, or, you know, good, go good, good question. First of all, I just want to make it clear. When I started Amstrad, there was no patent. I had no patents. I wouldn't even know what a patent, the only patent I would have heard of had been patent shoes. Um, so I didn't know anything about all that high-level stuff, OK? Um, but look, um, if, you, 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 if I've understood you correctly, you, you have a product which is, to do, is a kind of a more advanced uh, crash helmet that has... Um, Correct. Yeah. yeah. And um, you've got it to a stage of you've developed it and are you, you're saying that you don't have the money or, or, uh, to actually get it into mass production and that you need to seek a partner. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Yeah. I think, uh, well, again, you know, the lecture I just gave this fellow over there, I've got to tell you the same. I mean, as great as it, the product sounds and a good idea as it sounds, I don't think it would be very interesting to a normal bank, OK? I think you'll be disappointed if you went to them. But I would suggest that, it, you know, that under non-disclosure agreements... And, and if you've already filed patents, uh, patent applications for it, you're protected, as you know, that you try to go to um, people allied in the industries. The obvious thing is who makes crash helmets these days and go and have a, get an audience with them. First thing that will happen is, as I said to you, they will look at it, and, and I'll tell you, if they're in the business, you've got a hot item, you'll see it in five seconds. You know, when people brought me stuff... It didn't, I didn't need all the presentations and the storyboards and, and, and all the spreadsheets and all that crap. It was, they showed me the thing, and within a minute, I got it, or didn't get it, right? And, and, you, and, 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 and you'll, you'll, you'll get that. And um, then it's a case of brokering a good deal for you, uh, because it depends on the enthusiasm of the person you're showing it to, to see whether they want to bankroll the thing, yeah? and what's in it for you. Yeah? Um, and so, yeah, you might have to give a bit of equity away, and it'd be nice if you could find a partner that's in that in that industry, possibly a distributor uh, rather than a manufacturer, that that, that takes an equity uh, share in a company which you're allowed to run yourself, rather than become a little cog in a big in a big wheel. Did you have to do that when you started out? No, no, I didn't. I didn't actually. I I started with a hundred quid and a minivan, and the minivan cost fifty, and the rest was on on eight quid was on insurance, and the rest was on stock. So I didn't. I grew my business from organic growth, not inventing something like this gentleman. He was just buying run-of-the-mill merchandise.